Give me your best stupid kid story. When I was 6 or 7, the older kid from next door brought out a bunch of jalapenos. Me being new to the kind of thing immediately believed him when he told me they were special pickles. So I stuffed one in my mouth and started chewing because who doesn't love pickles when you are 7? My mom found me outside about a minute later crying and spraying my face with the hose. Good times. There used to be battery operated lint removers that were basically a metal fan with sharp blades covered by a metal plate with holes in it. The holes allowed the lint balls on your sweater to be pushed into the blades where they would be sheared off. The beauty of this device was, you could push it on your skin and nothing would happen. Pushing your tongue onto it worth a different story. I was too embarrassed to say what really happened so I said I bit my tongue. Comma worth a different story. My god. I cannot stop laughing at this. When I was very young like in second grade we were reading the classic when you give a mouse a cookie at the end of the book our teacher handed out tiny little cookie stickers about the size of a dime. Now being the attention seeking little kid I was I crumpled it up into a ball and put it in my ear to show my friends. After showing them I attempted to take it out but my pudgy little fingers only managed to shove it farther back into my ear. I started to panic because I couldn't get it out. I didn't want to tell my teacher because I thought she would be mad so I spent an entire school day with a sticker up my ear. When I got home I was scared to tell my parents because I thought I would get in trouble. So later on I snuck upstairs and grabbed my mom's tweezers. I was trying to dig around in my ear and once again managed to shove it farther in. Now you couldn't even see it in a mirror. Abandoning the tweezers I eventually forgot about it. Four years later I had completely forgot about what happened. One day my ear was in a lot of pain for about a week. Eventually my parents decided to bring me to a doctor because they thought I had an ear infection. Now I forget what the doctor did but eventually he decided there was something blocking my ear passage. They had to do a small operation and just use some bendy tweezer thing to pull out whatever it was. After a lot of pain he pulled out a paperish ball covered in earwax. I was like WTF. Then he uncrumbled it and I realized it was a cookie sticker. Everything came rushing back to me. The doctor and my mom were asking questions about how it got there and I just completely poker faced and said I had no idea. I haven't told anyone that story ever. And I have no idea why. When I was a kid, I saw those commercials for feed the children that said for pennies a day you can feed a child. I figured pennies a day meant 3 cents and collected $10.98 and in change, put it in an envelope, and mailed it to feed the children. I thought I had helped one child for a whole year, and added an extra 3 cents because it was a leap year. I never heard back. I told my parents to keep a lookout for any pictures of a starving kid I was supposed to hear back from in the mail, and when I never did, I figured the kid couldn't write. That's one of the sweetest things I have ever heard. When I was a little kid, 4 or 5, I was following my mother in a grocery store. Just like the cartoons movies, I decided to pull the corner watermelon from the well-stacked display pyramid of watermelons. Needless to say about 25 of them tumbled off the display table and split open on the ground. I really would like to see a video of this happening, but has to be by accident. When I was a kid, 5 or 6, I sneaked a swig of my dad's can of beer. Except it wasn't beer. He had finished it already and was using it as an ashtray. So instead I got hot cigarette ash pouring down my throat. Needless to say, I didn't understand what was so appealing about beer to adults for a few more years. I did the same thing except my dad's choose tobacco. Drank me a can of spit. I tried to sharpen the head of a grasshopper in my pencil sharpener. I thought he'd come out with a pointy head. He didn't. R.I.P. Hoppy. When I was about 5 or 6, my older brother, by 2 years, tried convincing me that his shoes were strong enough to bend a nail. So he stepped on a nail. It didn't bend. It went through his foot. Stupid kid. When I was about 5 I had Incredible Hulk branded flip flops. I became convinced that they were just as invulnerable as the Hulk, and went Hulk stomp on a pile of old boards with an upturned nail. A nail went right through the flip flops and into my foot, screaming for my mom, tetanus shot, the works. Having constantly heard how dangerous cars are all my life I realized I had never actually seen anyone be hurt by a car in any way. This led my 5 year old self to believe that cars were, in fact, 
completely harmless and everyone else is a stupid head. I tested this theory by running onto a very busy road and standing in front of an oncoming vehicle. I remember seeing the driver's face melt into one of sheer terror upon seeing me as the poor guy swerved directly through a fence into someone's yard and crashed into their living room. I decided I would not run this experiment a second time. Seeing how far a bicycle will coast on its own down a hill. First few times it fell over immediately. Unfortunately the idiot in me forgot where the hill ended. It rolled into someone's yard, hit a little hill, flew through the air and smashed through a window into a garage. This in turn hit a shelf with a few unsealed cans of paint and that of course citing Murphy's Law covered the whole entire garage floor in paint. That would have been acceptable. Except for there was an open convertible in the way. Later I found out it was a classic and our family was sued for damages. We lost. The classic convertible was a 69 Mustang. I still haven't forgiven myself to this day. Well a repaint and a new interior isn't too bad. Where it hurt was the cans denting the bodywork. I'm not sure the actual amount it added up to but it was a pretty penny. In the several thousands at the very least. I stuck gum in my eye to impress a girl. Needless to say, she wasn't impressed. And I got to spend half a day getting my eye cleaned. She wasn't the one. I know this young kid who was convinced to thickly coat all of his hair with roofing tar. It was the kind really gooey tar that is used for sealing holes in roofs. Loaded with kerosene and pitch black and all. The kid was somehow convinced it could be washed out with plain water. He gets a flat piece of stick and really smears on a thick coat. So thick it looks like some kind of heavy helmet. Well when I arrived home and my parents looked at me they completely freaked out and proceeded to wash my hair with anything reasonably safe, even tried Jay's fluid for a bit. Having no luck with anything I was subjected repeatedly to a thorough kerosene shampoo. Now anyone who knows tar also knows it leaves behind a wickedly black stain on one skin. Realizing they just couldn't get it all out they dragged me to a barber who proceeded to remove as much hair as he could with scissors, then a pair of electric clippers which he had to rinse in kerosene regularly to keep the blades moving, then a complete head shave. The stain? Well that just wouldn't come out right away so I was sent home with this incredible dark brown skin tone which matched my hairline perfectly. I was like this for more than a week, and as my hair grew back it had a strange hue to it for a while too. My normal hair color was blonde. TLDR tar not feathered. Crown of brown. Was young and foolish. I like that your story starts as I knew this kid. He, and admits a paragraph later that it was you. I saw all kinds of stupid kid things while camping with boy scouts. One time I saw a kid try to cut down a tree. With a hammer. He actually got about halfway through. I also saw a kid forget to drain grease from his griddle after cooking large amounts of bacon, then leave it over a lit stove unattended, causing a grease fire. He responded by knocking the whole stove over, propane tank and all. Good thing it had just rained. I'd got two stories. Happened very recently. First was a kid who found his dad's nail gun and was mucking about with it, as kids would do. He and his friends were reclining on a sofa on the back porch with their feet up, shooting at cans of coke some distance away. Then a large fly lands near his feet and he decides to egg on by his friends. Shoot it. Suffice to say, he shot a nail straight through his great toe and pinned it against the railing on his veranda. His friends somehow managed to free him and he presented to the ED department where I work in a lot of pain. Second was a 12 year old girl who wanted to get a belly piercing. Obviously mom said no. So she reads up some stuff on the internet, sterilizes her belly button with some mouthwash, gets herself a fish hook and pierces herself. Only problem was, the fish hook was barbed. Kids do stupid things but adults do worse. Till some people say great toe instead of big toe. Stupid kids. The worst one I heard was second hand from my sister, regarding the younger brother of her friend. These kids were about 14, mucking about, and they found a hedgehog. One of them decides the most hilarious course of action would be to throw it at his friend's face. Prickles went straight into this kid's eye, and he has one eye now. Idiot. The one who threw. Obviously. Experiencing serious secondhand pain right now. Those kids at arcades, who pretend they're playing a game when they're not. They get really into it too with the sound effects and all. More into it than people who are actually playing the game. 
It's awkward, when some kid is pretending to play a game that you're actually trying to play, but you don't know if you should wait for him to end his pretend game. One time I was at an arcade and a several kids started watching me play. My dad saw this and thought I was just pretending to play preventing all the other kids from playing. He ripped me away from the machine and some other kids started playing on my quarter. He later claimed he didn't realize that when it said insert coin it was for another player. My stupid kid is me. My neighbor and I used to think it was hilarious to roll eggs in the street. Hide behind her mom's pampas grass and watch unsuspecting cars run over them. One day while grabbing more eggs from the fridge, my dad caught me and for some reason I told him what we were doing. He screamed at me and made me put them back. I put them back but I already had a couple in my pockets that I kept. I ran straight back down to my friend's house with the goods. We rolled our egg and hid giggling behind her pampas grass. But this time the car stopped. The door flew open and I saw my dad's angry red face. Get in this freaking car. Now he whipped my butt also. He must really love eggs. This is a story from way back when my friends and I were just 12 years old. There was this huge wasp's nest outside my house that we used to pass on our way into town. One day we were passing it and I heard this huge shout. W-H-O-O-O-A-R. I look back and saw my friend Dan had just thrown a massive rock directly into the wasp's nest. A swarm visibly emerged from the hive and started surrounding him. The rest of us, of course, ran. With him and the angered swarm essentially chasing us. Every time I looked back he was flailing off another item of his clothing. As the wasps were getting in under all of it. Once we had reached a safe distance from him, I looked back to see him only in his underwear. Then he shouted how the frick did they get in there and started beating his own crouch incessantly trying to kill off the wasps that had penetrated his nether regions. I was convulsing with laughter. He ended up with an insane amount of stings and whenever we asked him why he did it he just replied I really hate wasps. TL. DR. When my friend was 12 he threw through a large rock into a hive, angered the swarm, and ended up having to strip down to get rid of all the wasps under his clothing. I thought your friend was stupid until he said he hated wasps. I totally agree with him. It was worth it. My younger brother was 7 years old at the time and I was stuck with him at the mall. We were at the music store and I was looking at the cassette singles on the wall, circa 1989 to 1990 ish, and he was trying to show off how long he could hold his breath. He kept tugging my arm in his show off attempts but I kept ignoring him, over and over again. Finally, he collapses into the wall of cassettes knocking almost all of them off the wall. So he's passed out the floor. I'm embarrassed because I'm 12 years old. So I'm dragging his body out of the store while all the adults look at me like I'm a horrible person. I never asked if he was okay. Just verbally assailed him for being stupid as I'm trying to revive him. This is a horrible, horrible story and I apologized to an entire race for it. I grew up in a pretty small, rural town in Canada and unlike it is now, there were very, very few people of color. When I was in kindergarten, some 23 years ago, we had a black child join our class and I guess for most of us it was one of our first experiences with someone of another race. A group of kids thought it would be fun to take the chalk box, full of white chalk dust from the board and pour it on him. I was not involved, but I remember laughing as the kids were smearing it on him. I don't remember seeing him after that. I only remembered this incident a couple years ago and I just feel really, really bad about it. I hope the kid grew up okay and it didn't mess him up. Stupid adult. I just learned from my spell checker that I've been spelling kindergarten wrong my whole life. When I was young, Probably between 2-4 years old, I would openly and verbally point out black people. I have a vivid memory of being in the grocery store checkout line and pointing out to my mom the man ahead of us, with a big smile on my face, and saying that man is black. At the time, I was totally oblivious as to why this may not be socially acceptable. When I was 2 or something I thought that soil was chocolate so I proceeded to eat lots of it. Apparently I had all sorts of things crawling out of my mouth. A few years ago, when I was 15 or 16, I was mixing sugar and potassium nitrate over a gas cooker outside. The mix got too hot. Boom. 
It set my hair on fire and nearly blinded me, as well as making my entire face look like a beetroot. I have a lot of Lego, the Mindstorms stuff, all the extras and whatnot. One day I decided to take a few motors and step them all down, so I had frick loads of torque and very low speed. I stuck my finger in between the two slowest gears, it pretty much ripped a whole bunch of flesh very gradually out of my finger, because the power pack was within the box containing all the gears, it was very hard to get it to stop. I tried to remove a wart with a soldering iron once, I had a big length of thick rope in the garden, so I attached a few weights to it and threw it around the branch of a really tall tree. I proceeded to pull myself up, something like 10 meters from the ground which is heck of a freaking height when you're 10 or so. Once I got to the top, I disattached the weights that were thrown around the branch. The rope fell. I had no way of getting down. I sat up in that tree for a good hour or so before my mum eventually found me and brought a ladder. I've done way more stupid things. I'll say if I remember any of it. Oh here's another good one. I was at my ex-grandparents house some years ago, when I discovered a BB gun. I shot myself point blank in the leg with it to see if it hurt. It freaking hurt. My dad told me when I was 3 years old he told me not to poop my pants. So one day I was playing outside and I just pinched a loaf right in the driveway. Henceforth, I shall refer to pinching a loaf in the driveway as punching trees. I used to work at a daycare during church hours, and there was a 2 year old whose coping mechanism was to reach down shirts and grope a breast. No joke, it was comforting to him whenever a new situation came up. Well, eventually he decided I was his favorite, more that the other helpers started handing him off to me regularly, so I got groped quite a bit. After a while I didn't think anything of it, though it was always a surprise. Come winter I wore a turtleneck to work one day. All was well until we went to a different classroom for music time. Upset by this change, he demanded to be picked up, and I obliged. He promptly set about trying to plunge his hand down my shirt for some sweet, comforting boobies, only to be denied by the turtleneck. A cue the most explosive tantrum I have ever seen a two year old throw. I'm not saying he was a stupid kid per se, just that it was one of the dumbest situations I've ever been in, and one that was hilarious to explain to the other helpers. I saw a kid at a bus stop have a total meltdown because his mom wouldn't let him eat cigarette butts off the ground. I don't think that's a very rare occurrence. Poor mom. I work at a children's hospital on an epilepsy monitoring unit. Believe it or not, we have quite a few kids that come in and fake seizures. We hook them up to an electroencephalogram by placing electrodes on the client's entire upper head, forehead, skull cap, temporal lobes, etc. From there, we can read their brain waves and watch them and their eeg readings from a control room. The computers allow the nurses and technicians to identify kids who have seizures. We had a young girl come in one day who was 15. She seemed very normal, but 15 minutes into the initial nurse to client interview, she snapped into an alternate person. After asking initial questions, we found that this family's grandmother is a witch and has possessed this young girl. She began speaking in Spanish very fluently as her deceased dad of 6 years ago. She was extremely convincing. Her family began asking for holy water, as if we just keep this lying around. The family truly believed this girl was being possessed by the dead. They began asking the jig questions as if she was a fortune teller. They asked how much money will we win tonight if we go to the casino she had answers, but after they asked questions about whether her parents used a condom when she was conceived, things got awkward for her. She had another episode of her father speaking through her in Spanish, then slipped into a seizure quickly afterwards. She shook her upper body violently, shoulders moving and all. Usually when shoulders are moving, it's a sure sign of a fake. Her eyes rolled back into her head, and the seizures looked pretty legit. Her eeg told a different story. When a client is seizing, their eeg spikes erratically and is very different from the normal looking reading. It is at this point the nurse I worked with rushed into the room to administer a sternal rub. These hurt like crap. Try it. Apply pressure on your sternum with a fist and pointer and thumb being the point of pressure. If a client is actually seizing, with most seizures they won't be able to feel the pain. This girl's face turned poor quick and she immediately stopped. Fake, stupid kid. We never found out why she did what she did, but figured that her family encouraged it for whatever season. 
Or she could have wanted attention. I got excited thinking I was seeing an actual possessed girl, but she was a fraud. She thought twice about fake seizing and we didn't see another seizure under our care. TL. DR. Stupid kid gets caught fake seizing. Stupid kid gets a hard sternal rub to provide evidence of a true seizure. Not even a kid. An army recruit. My dad was a teacher in the army on some kind of exercise. Camping. Like the army likes to do. Boiling eggs on a portable stove. He asks some recruit to get the eggs out of the water because they are done. The guy attempts to do it with his hand. He obviously was not aware how hot water needs to be to cook stuff. A guy I live with is in the army. Last Christmas we did Secret Santa and he had to buy a present for me. Whilst another girl in the house had to buy a present for him. Christmas comes and he gives her a present because she had bought him one. His words. He didn't understand the concept of Secret Santa. I never got a present from him. I once saw a kid in a public bathroom who wanted to make the automatic toilet flush. He waved around in front of it, and the toilet didn't flush. So he posed as you would normally stand if you were urinating. To fake it out. The toilet must know that trick. Because it still didn't flush. It was hilarious to witness. I also had a kid pee on my shoes once while I was taking a poo. Somehow he sprayed pee sideways from the adjoining stall. I was cleaning off my shoes when the father came out of the stall with his kid. He was very apologetic. I told him I got kids, it's cool. I'm just trying to figure out how he did that. The physics of standing up and pee under a wall defy science. Now you're thinking with portals. Not exactly a little kid but one of the college kids volunteering in a lab I worked in said you could set your finger on fire and it doesn't hurt. He of course meant to put alcohol on your finger and set it alight. Sort of. Not a trick that I haven't seen or done myself before. He is talking to one of the other students and I was going about my business. I look over to see he has coated his hands with alcohol and is reaching for the Bunsen burner. I yell but I'm too late. The flame has spread to his hands. And he is standing there smiling doing his best human torch impression. Until. His smile changes. Hey this is starting to burn. Hey. Get it off. Get it off. And he runs around the room shaking his hands and. Of course. Shooting alcohol everywhere. Burning alcohol. It is on his shirt. It is on the counter. On the floor. He is lucky he didn't get any in his hair. It all burns out pretty quickly and I had him run his hands under warm water for a while. There weren't any serious burns that he needed real first aid for. But, Jesus, what a freaking idiot. I can't believe he was a biochem major. Another instance involved a kid at the gym. There was a hamstring machine there where you would stand and the bar was behind your ankle. You would raise your one leg bending at the knee to lift the bar. Then you do the other leg. The smoron tries both legs at the same time. And does it about 8 times before he realizes that something isn't right or that he can't hold on to the handles anymore. It wasn't as funny as the fire thing but at least the kid was more of a kid and not a moronic 20 year old. This happened to a friend of mine. Yeah, that'll do nicely. He was told to take a bath and that he has to wash everything. To which, he responded everything? Even those things that help me breathe? His mother asked him which things he was talking about. He pointed to his crotch saying these things down here, because once I squeezed one once and I couldn't breathe. Upon being told this story he didn't remember the bath conversation, but he does remember giving his boys a squeeze. This is the best one by far. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.